Father, we love you. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for this day. This is a day to remember, Lord, because this is the day, Lord, you rose from the dead. And I just, your angels, Lord, you, they are just awesome. They get right to the point. Why do you seek the living among the dead? He is not here. He is risen. Praise God. Praise God. You are risen. You are our risen Savior. And Lord, we give you glory and honor and praise and thanks, Lord, for it. Now, Lord, as we open the word today, open our ears, open our eyes, open our hearts, Lord, so that we can hear you, see you, and, and Lord, follow you and obey you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We give you glory and praise and honor in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Well, I want, I've got news for you. Have you heard the news? Have you heard the news? The tomb is empty. Have you heard that news? Yes, the tomb is empty. Praise God. Praise God. That's the title of our message today. The tomb is empty. Mark 16, verse 6 says this. And he said unto them, Be not affrighted. You seek Jesus of Nazareth, which was crucified. He is risen. He is not here. Behold the place where they laid him. Behold the place where they laid him. That empty tomb is important to you and I. That empty tomb is evidence to us. The Lord is risen. He's not here. Why seek ye the living among the dead? He is not here. He is risen. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Let's, 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 you know how some authors, they'll take a, a, a point in history and uh, they'll say, they'll write a whole novel. What if it went a different way? What if it went a different way? What if the Nazis won the war? Have you ever seen people write books like that all the time, right? Well, Paul did that too. Did you know that? Paul was probably one of the first to do that. Let's look at uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 14 for a minute. We're not going to linger here very long, but we, we do need to look at this. And it says this. Uh, let's, go to verse, let's go to verse 13. It says this. But if there be no resurrection of the dead, then Christ is not risen. And if Christ be not risen, then our preaching is vain. Then our preaching is vain. And your faith is vain also. Yea, and we are found false witnesses of God because we have testified of God that he raised up Christ whom he raised not up, if so be that the dead rise not. For if the dead rise not, then, is not, then Christ is not raised. And if Christ be not raised, your faith is vain and are yet in your sins. That's kind of like an alternate uh, storyline, isn't it? If, he, if there is no resurrection of the dead... Then Christ didn't rise. And if he didn't rise, then your, life, your faith is vain. Your faith is meaningless. Your faith is void. Your faith is a big zero with the rim knocked off. It's nothing. That's what he's saying here. But I want you to know, there is a resurrection. There is a resurrection. And Christ was the first fruit of the resurrection. You know what we call this? We call this faith. Our whole faith hangs on that resurrection moment. Our whole faith hangs on that. If there is no resurrection, then Christ isn't raised. And we have nothing. We're void. We're, we're empty. Our faith is nothing. Our faith hangs on that moment. Praise God. Praise God. Let's go to, uh, I want to I wanna introduce y'all to, we've got a lot of ears that haven't heard this yet, I, but they, we've got ears that's probably heard it 300, no, how many times? 51 times 
uh, since, since a year ago. Titus 1-2 says this, God cannot lie. God cannot lie. What does that mean? This book is not a book of lies. This book is not a book of vanity, of vain, empty nothingness. This book is truth. This book is truth. God cannot lie. This is God's word to you. This is God's word to you. All scripture was given by inspiration of God, by God's breath. Inspiration means the breath of God. This word contains the breath of God. Every word is the breath of God to you. Just like Adam, when he was laying there empty, laying there just a, a beautiful form of all that dust and clay. But he was lifeless until the breath of God entered him. This book contains the breath of God. It was given by inspiration of God. And we need to know that. We need to hold true to that. We need to, to hear that. And then we can go to Malachi chapter 3, verse 6. I thought y'all would have it in memory by now. Malachi 3, 6. I am the Lord. I change not. Say it with me. I am the Lord. I change not. What he was, he is. He will always be. What he was, he is. He will always be. I am the Lord, I change not. Hebrews 13, 8. Jesus, the same yesterday, today, forever. Jesus, the same yesterday, today, For Are you getting the picture here? He doesn't change. He does not lie. He does not change what we read about him yesterday. We can read about him today. We will read about him tomorrow. What we learned of him yesterday, we, I'm t when I say yesterday, I'm talking about back when this was written. Yesterday when this was written. What was written then is true today. And it'll be true forever. The grass withers. The flower fades, but the word of our God stands forever, forever, forever. We could sing, break into a chorus of that song right now. Forever, forever. He is all that we sang about. I've already forgot the words, Laurie. Don't put me on the stage with the microphone. Forever and ever. He's not changing. He is not changing. Praise God. And then one more, Acts 10, 34. This is important. This is a story of Peter when the Lord woke him up with the dream. He gave Peter a very interesting dream about a sheet coming down and it's filled with all these game, all these various animals and game of all different kinds, clean and unclean. And the, and the Lord said, kill and eat. Kill and eat. And the word of the Lord came to him, go to Cornelius' house. Well, Cornelius was a Gentile. Cornelius wasn't Jew. He was Gentile. And the Lord was telling him, take the word. Take the word. The word is to all. It's not to the Jew only. He's opened it up to everybody. And what did, you, uh, what did Peter, uh, when he got there, some great things happened. And you know what Peter said? In verse 34, he said, of a truth, I perceive that God is no respecter of persons. God is no respecter of persons. What does that mean? Anybody want to take a stab at it? What does that mean? God doesn't respect his own creation? No, it means he treats one the same as he treats the other and the other and the other and the other and the other. He treats us all the same. He treats us all the same. He doesn't change. He is what, uh, today what he was yesterday. He will be the same forever. Jesus, the same today as he was yesterday. He will be forever. He's no respecter of person. He treats everybody the same yesterday as he treats them today as he treats them forever. That's the truth. 
That's the truth. He treats us the same. We all stay at, there's level ground at the foot of that cross. None of us are higher or lower than one another. We're all treated the same in the, it, before God. Throughout all this age, this church age, of a truth, I perceive that God is no respecter of persons. What he did in this book 2,000 years ago, he's doing today. And he will continue to do. And that's something that we can lay hold of, we can believe, and we can sink our teeth into and never let it go. Now over in the book, I believe it's Matthew, and I'm going to take a stab at it. Matthew chapter 8. Jesus says two words to a man. And it's, I will, I will. Will And I'm just going to tell you what, what he said because I'm not seeing it jump off the page at me. The man was sick. The man was sick and he needed healing. He needed, God, he needed the Lord to touch him and heal him. And he said, Lord, I know you can. I know you can. But will you? Will you? Will you heal me? Jesus said two words. No, he said more than that, but the two, first two words were, I will be thou clean. Listen, I will be thou clean. I will. Lord, I know you can, but will you? I will. Jesus, the same yesterday, today, forever. I am the Lord, I change not. He's no respecter of persons. What he says to one, he says to all. He said it to that man He's saying it to you. I will, I will be thou clean. What's that? Verse 3. Chapter 8, verse 3. There it is. Thank you. Chapter 8, verse 3. And Jesus put forth his hand and touched him, saying, I will be thou clean. God just showed us his will, his will for you and your health. Believe that. Believe that. Don't let anybody talk you out of the word of God. Don't let anybody talk you out of the truth. This is truth. This is truth. If Christ be not, if there is no resurrection, then Christ hasn't been raised. And our faith is vain. But there is a resurrection. Christ has risen. Our faith is on fire. Our faith is on fire. Just like those two men to Emmaus. Man, when they heard the word of God coming out of Jesus' mouth, they didn't even recognize him. But they said, did our hearts not burn within us? What was it that caught that flame, that heart of fire? It was the word of God. It was the word of God. They believed it. We've got to believe this word. We've got to believe. You've got to fight the good fight of faith. Take this word. The sword of the Spirit, pull it out of the scabbard and slay those demons that are trying to talk you out of your healing, of your health, of your wholeness, of your victory. Folks, this is not playtime anymore. This is serious. The resurrection is coming. It's coming soon and we need to be ready. I'm speaking to me as much as I'm speaking to anybody. Do you, do you hear me, Dave? Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Yes, yes, I hear. I hear this. I hear this. Praise God. We need to be awake. We need to be awake to the truth because truth matters. Truth matters. Listen. John 18, verse 37. Pilate therefore said unto him. All right, so let's get the picture here. Jesus has already been betrayed. He's already prayed for you. He has prayed for you. If we go over to John chapter 17, I want you to, if you have your Bible, take a look at John. That's just a beautiful chapter. If you want to see what the Lord prayed in that garden that evening, you can read it right here. Praise God. John 17. And I'll just read the first uh, few verses and then find what I'm looking for. These words spoke Jesus and lifted up his eyes to heaven and said, Father, the hour is come. Glorify thy son that thy son may 
glorify thee, as thou hast given him power over all flesh, that he should give eternal life to as many as thou hast given him. And this is this, this beautiful right here, beautiful right here. This is life eternal, that they might know thee, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom thou hast sent. God wants us to know him. And that word is a, such a close fellowship, a close knowing. We need to, we need to know what he's saying. He, he doesn't just want us to know about him. He wants us to be intimately familiar with him. He wants us to know him. He knows us down to the hairs of our head. He knows us. I wonder if he knows the black from the gray. Because there's a one. I mean, I'm a, I can almost count the black now on one hand. There's not many left. There's not many left. Does he know? Yes, he knows. He knows me intimately. He wants me to know him intimately as well. That this is life eternal, that they might know thee, the only true God in Jesus Christ, whom thou hast sent. Praise God. I have glorified thee on the earth. I have finished the work which thou gavest me to do. And now, O Father, glorify thou me with thine own self, with the glory which I had with thee before the world was. I have manifested thy name unto the men which thou gavest me out of the world. Thine, thine they were, and thou gavest them to me, and they, were kept, they have kept thy word they have kept thy word they have kept thy word moments from this moment in this prayer peter when those cohort of romans of of guards come to get him you know how many men that is if you'll look that up do a strong concordance search do a word study on that it was like five or six Hundred came to arrest Jesus. Five to six hundred. And it could have, could have been as many as a thousand. When it says captain in that scripture about uh, concerning that arrest, he's a captain over 500 to a thousand men. Moments, he, what did Jesus say? They have kept thy word. And here, Peter's going to have a moment, isn't he? He's going to have a moment. He's going to lose his temper. He's going to grab that sword. He's going to swing it. And it's going to take Malchus's ear off. And that ear is cut clean and lands on the ground right before Jesus. What does Jesus do? He picks that ear up. I wonder if he brushed it off. Clean it off a little, yeah. And he healed that man's ear right there. Right there. If I were the captain of the guard, I think I would have said, about face to Jerusalem. <laughs> I think I would have said, Lord, we surrender. Huh? I mean, because they, when they approached they announced, hey, we're looking for Jesus of Nazareth. Are you him? And what did he say? I am. <laughs> and they all just fell down like trees. They all fell down like trees. And after they had picked themselves back up, here they go arresting him. That's amazing to me. Absolutely amazing. The word pictures that flash in my mind when I hear that and see that. I just, it's vivid. It's vivid. All right. Let's move on in John chapter 17. My time is, is ticking here. Verse 17, Jesus says something. He says this. In this prayer, he's praying to his Father this whole time. He says, sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. Thy word is truth. Sanctify them. Set them apart for a holy purpose by thy truth, thy word is truth. You're set apart for God's use by, and you're set apart by his truth. His word 
is truth. Pilate's asking a question over here in John 18, verse 37. Let's read that. Pilate therefore said unto him, Art thou a king? And Jesus answered, Thou sayest that I am a king. To this end was I born. And for this cause came I into the world, that I should bear witness unto the truth. Unto the truth. Bear witness unto the truth. Think about who Jesus is. Let's go back to the beginning. In the beginning, John 1.1, 1, 1, in the beginning was the Word. And the Word was with God, and the Word was God. In verse 14, you can jump to, there's a lot of good stuff between 1 and 14, but jump to verse 14. And the Word became flesh. The Word became flesh and dwelt among us. And we beheld His glory, the glory as of the only begotten, as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. That's Jesus. He came to bear witness of the truth. He came to bear witness of the truth. Pilate saith unto him, what is truth? That just floors me. That question just floors me. Think about who Pilate is. He's the highest government official in Jerusalem. The only one he answers to, as far as my knowledge is concerned, somebody may know better, but as far as my knowledge is concerned, the only one he answers to pertaining to Jerusalem is Caesar. Is Caesar. He's the highest. And he's asking, what is truth? Sounds like a bureaucrat, doesn't it? Sounds just like a bureaucrat. He's playing both sides. He's playing both sides. And think about this, and we could go into further detail. We won't. But he's trying to honor Caesar. Because the Jewish leadership brings some heavy accusations here. If you don't do this thing, you know, you're, you're violating your, 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 uh, the authority that Caesar's given you. They're, they've got him. They've got him there. But yet, gee, but Pilate, he, he goes on and says this. What is truth? And when he had said this, he went out again to the Jews, the leadership, and saith unto them, I find in him no fault at all. He's not guilty. He's, there's no guilt in this man. He's not guilty. I find in him no fault at all. But as we know, they cried out for Barabbas. There is a custom. He goes on and says there is a custom. And they cried out for Barabbas. They freed Barabbas. Just a rank thief and crucify the Lord of glory, the innocent. Does truth matter? Pilate didn't know what truth was. He says, what is truth? Jesus came to bear witness of the truth. We are sanctified by the truth, by the word of God, by the word of God. What is truth? Does truth matter? Modern society, it seems like today truth is a casualty. Truth is a casualty. It's an unknown. It's a derelict. It's old. It's antiquated. Truth is, is, is not important anymore. Truth is under attack. The world and its system follows, listen, the world and its system follows the God of this world. 2 Corinthians 4, 4. The God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not. The God of this world is Satan. Little g, little g, little God, little g of this world. But the world, the system of the world is following Satan. Listen to James 4.4. 4. And this is a warning to us. And uh, we need to circle this and remember this. Friendship of the world is enmity with God. Friendship with the world, we are at odds with God. We are opposed to God when we are friends of this world. John 8.44 says this. The devil is a liar from the beginning. There is no truth in him. There is no truth in him. We need to understand that. We need to be 
clear on that. There is no truth in the devil. The God of this world is leading this world system. And there is no truth in him. We need to be mindful of that. Truth. Listen to what God says about truth. Psalms 91.4 His truth shall be thy shield and buckler. His truth shall be your protection and safety. His truth is our shield and buckler. Psalms 25.5 says this, Lead me in thy truth and teach me, for thou art the God of my salvation. On thee do I wait all the day. Lead me. Lead is a Hebrew word that relates to archery. Archery. Any of of y'all like to, to, to shoot bow and arrow? It means to bend the bow. It means to string the bow. That word lead me means that. It means to shoot the arrow. And the little bit I know about archery, I've got a long bow at the house. I mean, you've got to practice. You've got to practice. With a long bow, you don't have any sights on it. You've got to get a feel for it. You've got to, you can align it and you can shoot it. And you can hit a target, but you've got to practice it. You've got to practice it. Lead me. Lead me in thy truth. Lead me in thy truth. Teach me. Teach me. Psalms 119.30 says this, I have chosen the way of truth. Did you hear that? I have chosen. That's an important word. The way of truth. Truth is a choice we make. Uh, that we make. Truth is a choice that we make. This world system is following a liar. Let's be clear on that. The God of this world, Satan, is a liar. This world system is following a liar. We've got to choose truth. We've got to choose it. The way of truth is a choice we make to follow. The process of going the way of truth requires one to walk in the judgments, the Word of God. If we're going to walk the way of truth, we've got to walk in this Word of God. We've got to get this Word in us. So much so that we're doing Romans 12 too. We're no longer conformed, poured into the mold of this world. But we are transformed by the renewing of our mind. That word transform means that caterpillar to a butterfly. That metamorphosis process takes place in us as we get this word in us and as we get in this word. Praise God. The choice is ours. God doesn't make the choice for you. He leaves that up to us. He leaves that up to us. Deuteronomy 30, 19 says this. I call heaven and earth to record this day against you that I have set before you life and death, blessing and cursing. Therefore, choose life. Here it is, folks. Death. Life. Choose life. Choose it. Choose it. That both thou and thy seed may live. Praise God. And then Joshua 24, 15 says, Choose you this day whom you will serve. It's a choice we make. We choose whom we will serve. And then I just can't uh, forget about uh, Elijah on Mount Carmel. That day when the prophets of Baal came out and were hollering out to Baal. Elijah said this, Why halt ye between two opinions? If God be God, serve him. If Baal, then serve him. Folks, we got a choice ahead of us. The choice is truth. The choice is truth. Jesus said this in John 14, 6. He said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. There's no other way to God the Father but through Jesus. Jesus is God made flesh that dwelt among us. There's no other choice. If that's the road, it's narrow, but it's straight as an arrow. It is straight. You've got to work to fall in the ditch. It's straight. 
you just keep your eyes on the Lord, you'll never fall in the ditch. John 17, 17, we've said this, sanctify them through thy truth, thy word is truth. Praise God. And David said this, or the scripture says this in Psalm 119, 11, thy word, thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. Does truth matter? Is truth relevant today? Pilate didn't know what truth was. Pilate did not know what truth was. Folks, we do. We know what truth is. Let me tell you. Truth is, listen, just, just listen. Let the Lord paint pictures in your mind. Truth is, a prayer prayed in the garden by one who is going to give his life as a ransom for many. And him praying, not my will, but thine be done. Truth. It was a kiss and a betrayal for 30 pieces of silver. Truth. It's a man, innocent man arrested. A trial. A mocking. It's a blindfold and a beating. And men filled with hate yelling, prophesy, prophesy. Tell us who hit you. That's truth. That's truth. What is truth? It's a scourge and a whipping post that lays stripes and wounds upon an innocent man's back. Every sickness, every disease upon the back and the body of the one whose name is Jehovah Rapha. The Lord that healeth thee. That's truth. That's truth. It, truth is a crown of thorns made by cruel hands shoved down hard upon an innocent man's head that's truth truth is a scarlet robe draped over the bloodied and bleeding shoulders of a king carrying a makeshift scepter that's truth this is what we're talking we're talking about truth Pilate didn't know truth he doesn't know truth the world doesn't know truth truth what is it it's an old rugged cross on a hill called Golgotha the Savior of the world hanging on it, dying the death that we deserve, that's truth. It's nails driven into His hands and feet. It's six hours of pain and torment and anguish of God's only Son who was given to show the Father's love to all the world. It's two thieves on crosses by the Lord, one mocking, one repenting. And the Lord saying, to the one repenting, today you will be with me in paradise. That's truth. That's truth. What is truth? It's Roman soldiers at the foot of the cross gambling for Jesus' unseen garment. What is truth? It's the Lord of glory crying out, I thirst, I thirst, but refusing to drink. That's truth. That's truth. What is truth? It's the Son crying to the Father. My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? That's truth. That's truth. What is truth? It's the Savior of the world praying, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. That's truth. That's truth. What is truth? It's the Son of God crying out, It is finished. It's truth, folks. Pilate didn't understand it. This world doesn't understand it. What is truth? It's a rich man's tomb and a hasty burial. It's three days in the heart of the earth where all the powers of darkness are totally defeated. Truth is Christ Jesus, our Lord, taking away the, uh, the keys of death, hell, and the grave from Satan. Praise God. That's truth. We're talking truth. We're talking truth. Truth is a stone rolled away. Truth is an empty tomb. Truth is the resurrection of the Lord. Truth is the risen Lord Jesus. That's truth. That's truth. Truth is this. Every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that Jesus is Lord. That's truth. Praise God. Truth is this. Jesus is coming soon. Jesus is coming soon. Get ready. Get ready. 
Truth is, forgiveness of sins. Aren't you glad? Aren't you glad? Truth is, a new creation in Christ Jesus. Old things passed away. All things become brand new. That's truth. That's truth. What is truth? It's a power to be a witness for our God. Praise God. What is truth? It's loving God with all your heart, your soul, your mind, and your strength. It's loving each other. As we love ourselves. That's truth. And it's preaching Jesus. Preaching Jesus in everything we do. Everything we do. If it's handing out a cup of cold water, if it's greeting somebody at the door, if it's helping somebody up, if it's taking somebody a dinner, if it's helping somebody pay a bill, if it's loving on somebody who's just lost their husband, just lost their wife, that's truth. That's truth. Truth is a Savior named Jesus. The virgin-born babe of Bethlehem. The only begotten Son of the Father who was given to the world because of God's great love. He's the firstborn among many brethren. He's the lion. The lion of the tribe of Judah. He's the Alpha and the Omega. He's the beginning and the end. He's the first and the last. And He is the King of kings and the Lord of lords. That's truth. That is truth. What is truth? The stone has been rolled away. The tomb is empty. Jesus is risen. Jesus is Lord. That's truth. That's truth. Pilate didn't understand it. We do. We do. And that truth is not just to keep to ourselves. No, we got a commission. We got a plan ahead of us, and the Lord has given us the power and the words, the protection we need to go forth into all the world and preach the gospel. Start, start in your own home. Start in, if you haven't started, start. If you haven't started, start. Start there, and then go out. Praise God. We got a a lot of work to do. Huh? Trump is going to sound soon. Are we just going to sit back? David, are you just going to sit back? No. Let's get to work. Let's do the work of the Lord. Praise God. Can we agree? Amen? Amen. Praise the Lord. Lord, we love you and praise you. Thank you, Lord, for this day, this resurrection day, Lord. Lord, for your power and your glory that's working in, in your church. In your church, church, in this day, in this hour, Lord. Lord, you're, look, oh, Lord, as I see it, Lord, you're, you're, you're not looking at our ability, Lord. You're looking at our availability. You just want us to enter into the fields and harvest the harvest that lays before us, Lord. And, Lord, we're doing that. We're doing that. We're following after you. We're grabbing our sickle, our scythe, and we're, we're, we're bringing them in, Lord, in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. And it's not by our great effort, Lord. It's our looking to you. You are looking to you as we follow your footsteps and you guide our steps, Lord. And we thank you for that. We give you glory and praise and honor. I'm going to be down front here for a moment. If there's anybody in here that needs me to pray with you, come forward. I'll be glad to pray with you. But we're going to go ahead and dismiss. Father, thank you. We go out with joy. We are led forth with peace. Lord, the mountains and the hills, Lord, they, they, they just do a dance before us, Lord, because you have anointed us to carry this word throughout this community throughout this world, Lord. And we give you glory and praise and honor in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. Well, praise the Lord. Yes. You, yes. Don, Don has just a quick word for you. Praise the Lord.
thank God, uh, Resurrection Day. Yes. We have something to be grateful for. It's a time of celebration. See the cloth? Purple. That's a sign of royalty. Color of royalty. He is the risen king, lord of lords, king of kings. And he did it all for me. He did it all for you. He took everything we had coming. I was thinking about doing this for the last couple of weeks. But I wanted to wait until I had all the information I needed. And the Lord just told me this morning, you already have all the information you Amen. need. Amen. Right here. Yeah. Right in this book. Thank you, Lord. you have all the information you need. And I want you to speak this morning. This last month, I've had some <laughs> rough days. Uh, I went at the beginning of the month to see my doctor for uh, annual checkup and lab work. And the results came back. I went and saw the doctor for um, a follow-up uh, four days after I had had the visit. And he said, your blood work was okay, even though you had a steroid shot. It ran your daily numbers up on your blood, but it didn't affect your A1C. However, there is something there that I'm concerned about, and your uh, platelets show concern. So I want to send you to a hematologist, do some more blood work. Um, so I went and saw this lady. Her name is Dr. Esther Tan. Great lady, wonderful person, and she works at the uh, oncology. Um, and uh, oncology building in a clinic there at, in Thomasville. And she is a hematology oncologist, uh, cancer of the blood. Uh, they did the work. She said, I'm going to send you out for a CT scan. Um, I'm going to see what's, there may be some, something going on there. So they gave me a TC, uh, CT scan. She called me at home that night. First time I ever had a doctor call me at home to give me information. She said, I want you to know this, and I want you to know that I care about it, and I have some concern about it. We found two masses on your right lung. One of them's the size of a baseball, and right next to it, there's a nut still in the right lung, there's another one the size of a golf ball. I am going to set you up for some more tests, and I went to, on Tuesday, I went to get set up with the, um, with the doctor through uh, Vita to go in and, uh, and set up to have a, auto, uh, a biopsy done on that lung, and then I, the doctor had already worked very quickly and got me set up to have a PET scan. And, a, and another uh, uh, MRI done in the same day last Wednesday. That was a long day at the hospital. With the PET scan was about two hours, had about an hour and a half to wait after that to give that gunk they put in me to get out of my system and, and then to do the MRI. Well, I never got any information from that at all yet but I know I believe in my God Amen. and Thank I know you, Lord. that I am the healed of God I know I'm healed whatever they saw in there whether it's a phantom or whatever they saw in there is going to be gone yes. when I get this biopsy done they're going to find nothing Amen. I give all the honor and the praise Jesus Christ, my Lord, my Savior. And I told several times, talking to those doctors and nurses in there, I have no fear. What do you mean you have no fear? I have no anxiety. I have no fear about this. I already know the results of this. 
You're not going to find anything. My God has already healed me. Jesus Christ is the great physician. He is the Jehovah Rapha, the God who heals me. I am healed. And this is what he wants me to tell you today. Believe in him. This is something before I came to this church, I didn't have faith. I kept praying for it. But God showed me through this faith. I am so glad I met her. I never would have come here. But I have found through this church and faith and trust. And that's something I never had before either. But I trust him and I gave him my life. I trust you with my life, Lord. Now you do things your way. I'm not going to try anymore. And I don't have to. That takes all the pressure off of me. I know God has it and he'll do it right. Yeah. So this is my story and it's still going on. And I'll fill you in after I have that biopsy done. Amen. And it's going to be good news. Amen. Praise the Lord. Well, this life is real, folks, that we live. The battles that we face are real. But I want, to, I want you to know something. That tomb is empty. That tomb is empty. And the victories are real, more real than the battles we face. Do we want another service now? No, it's lunchtime. Lord, we love you and praise you as we go forth, Lord. We stand with Don, Lord. We stand in faith with him, and we just hold his arms up like Aaron and her held up the arms of Moses, Lord. The victory has already taken place, and we agree with Don. He is the healed of God, and we rejoice in it. And we thank you in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. Well, praise the Lord, everybody. We are dismissed. Have a wonderful resurrection day. <laughs>